This is Health and Society, a podcast series featuring early career researchers from the Department of Global Health and Social Medicine at King's College London with interviewer Nigel Warburton. For further information and more podcasts, go to www.healthandsociety.co.uk. Hello, I'm Nigel Warburton. Joining me today is Abin Thomas, a PhD candidate in the Department of Global Health and Social Medicine at King's College London. The topic we're going to focus on is organ donation and transplantation. So, Abin, I know you've done research in a very specific part of India, Kerala. Why did you choose that particular location? When I was joining King's for my PhD, I haven't discussed uh, my current PhD proposal as it stands in terms of organ donation and transplantation. I was working on legal debates on euthanasia and suicide. But coincidentally, I found out that there was a movement happening in Kerala in the field of organ donation and transplantation. And I got interested by reading a lot of literature around it. And I thought that would be a more interesting subject to work on. And I pursued my interest and uh, this is where I am right now after a year of PhD fieldwork. There have been a number of scandals that emerge from India where people have been coerced into donating organs and I'm sure that must affect how people feel about organ donation. I think this is the point what got me interested in this kind of research because whenever I was in my field and when I talked about my research, people were always skeptical about the project because there is, of course, this uh, understanding that the possibility of organ trade, that is one of the feared element of this particular phenomenon or the movement. But recently, in, in late 2000, I think um, a couple of popular initiatives and NGO activities and a uh, couple of high-profile kidney donation actually tr- help to transform that particular earlier background to a new f- context and actually it helped to make people av- are aware that okay is there is something else going on and you can actually save a life so it's more about voluntary donations and cadaveric donations uh, not it's not about money these days though there are cases that are being happening rarely but i think um, it's more about celebrating humanity giving life saving life etc cetera, etc cetera. so these high profile donors gave their organs out of purely altruistic motives yeah one woman her name is uma prem and she donated her kidney to a stranger in 1999 and after 10 years in 2009 a catholic priest called uh, father davis chiramel donated his kidney to a stranger and that became a news in the media in national media for one reason where a catholic priest donating his kidney to a hindu man and that particular boundary transgressing aspect that aspect became more popular and people try to look into organ donation as a more noble activity in 2011 another successful industrialist kochav sechitlapalli he donated his kidney to a truck driver and it was actually much more celebrated act of humanitarianism i think because a successful industrialist who can afford anything that donation actually struck in the minds of the people and it became more popular. I just read his biography regarding that and he says that, okay, I got richer at heart when I donated my kidney. So this particular positive way of promoting organ donation by high profile people, I think high profile donors made it more popular along with the far advanced health infrastructure that Kerala has got at the moment compared to other states, especially in India. In 2010 and in 2012, Father Chiramil started two charity walks to promote organ donation and transplantation. And he traveled from north and to south of Kerala for two months. So along with these social and community-based approaches, we have seen government setting up Kerala Network for Organ Sharing Network in 2012 
so on the one hand there is a social awareness that is going on and on the other hand there is a legal and formal state structure that actually make use of the social context it everything comes into picture in 2012 and the stage is set for a perfect start in the same year also there were a couple of movies uh, one of the popular movie in cold traffic actually portrayed a real life incident in chennai to talk about how difficult and how exciting it is to talk about topic like organ transplantation and getting organ from a brain donor in demanding circumstances i think it it has got into different layers of social consciousness political social community and even the mental courage of the people to talk about death so people don't find any kind of social taboos associated with in terms of public discussion it's interesting particularly those high profile cases of people making altruistic donations how they've become the catalyst that's allowed for such a a radical change of thought because we're talking about a situation presumably where there were for some people strong religious arguments against donation i think in every religion there are people with mixed approach to the idea of organ donation many of them actually see this as a medical miracle that's for sure but at the same time this apprehension towards the idea of organ donation comes from i, I think the belief about karma or the belief about integrity of the body the belief about the faith in an afterlife etc etc and i think to some extent the donations that was happening across religions actually helped people to think about a humanist secular way of organ exchange which is very important so the cultural and religious aspect becoming more irrelevant i think so rather than people see okay some people even who believe that our body is given by god they are actually in favor of saving a life you know they are not worried about what happens to the body after death so i think there is much more open mind approach to organ donation at the moment how do you go about researching a topic like this because there's so many different elements at play and how do you understand what's happening as part of my research field work i stayed in a village in kerala and uh, i followed a couple of ngos who actually promote organ donation and transplant fund raising other than that i spoke to a couple of transplant surgeons transplant coordinators and organ donors and recipients and their family members also i talked to normal human beings like who are not even aware of the word brain death but what i found interesting was uh, the resistance towards the idea of the category of brain death was not that much you know as i feared because in the case of japan it is a big issue so i think kerala is in a better position to move forward along with its high successful rate of health performance so you talk to people involved both as donors and also as recipients i try to balance between the viewpoint from both sides so some of the studies don't look at the recipients or even the post transplant life and so so far it sounds like um, a very positive story that there's a sense in which through the noble actions of several high profile people a community a whole region of india seems to be positively oriented towards organ transplants i think it did not happen over a night because there were things happening in early 2000 for example the state of the art health facility actually is one of the reason and uh, in kerala it is like a semi urban community or a semi urban society where you can access state of the art uh, healthcare system across kerala and i think it is very important to look at the history more important because it just did not start in 2010 or 2011 so many people started working before that in 1995 kerala adopted the law toa the transplantation act then in 2000 there was an organization in cochin to promote cadaver donation then a couple of first transplant multi organ transplants happened in cochin or in trivandrum then in kote so at the moment i think there is no distinction between private and public delivery of healthcare so 
hospitals can also afford to do a expensive organ transplantation in kerala so i think it's a network of things that actually enabled this positive story even if there are gray areas and there are concerns there are critical issues in, involved in this that i am aware of so i think it's better to talk about positive aspects at the moment what is it that you're trying to do with your research it's my hope and it's my belief that it will contribute to a kind of policy debates or a kind of insight to help government formulate a much more feasible and accessible organ transfer system in that will help people to donate and promote organ donation and receive your organs without any delay and it th- i think it has to do with the bureaucratic structures and the ways in which governance is maintained and also the ways in which people see and perceive the idea of organ donation and brain death so it is i hope it will lead to a kind of transformation of the current scenario in the uk there's been a change of policy and and we've moved from a situation where people have to pledge actively pledge their organs after death now that's a default position it's assumed that you will be and you have to make an effort not to as it were i wonder if there's anything analogous going on in india in india we have to catch up with the advanced developed countries in a very in various sense i think because we don't have a national registry of organ donation and transplantation at, in place at the moment so there are a lot of medical infrastructure to come in place on the first hand but in terms of donation and who can donate i think uh, people have to pledge their organs before they are going to die so if you will if you are willing to be an organ donor you need to pledge your organ and someone should know from the family that okay he uh, willingly signed a form which is called organ pledge forms i think the key is to make all those decision possible in actual terms rather than pledging your organs i think that's the key and that is very important are the particular types of people who might read your work and and impose different ways of doing things the people associated with the kerala organ network sharing program i think this called mrutha sanjeevan in malayalam so they are pretty much interested and most of the two ngos that i worked with they are interested in my work and also there is a, an organization for organ donor which is called organ donor association who actually donated their organ altruistically so i think these stakeholders actually can learn from my research and in dialogue with the research i think they can be the agents for change hey ben thomas thank you very much thank you thank you a lot thank you for listening to health and society this podcast series is sponsored by the educational fund and produced by aiden judd and ellie clifford For further information and more podcasts go to www.healthandsociety.co.uk